Today, I'm going to show you three different ways to tune a passive radiator. You might think this is hard. It isn't. In fact, you can use some of the things you have laying around your house to figure this out. So stay tuned. <laughs> Now, some of you might even be wondering what a passive radiator is. A passive radiator looks just like a normal speaker driver, but you'll notice that it doesn't have any type of motor structure on it. Instead, that part's been cut off. And it's been replaced with a place where you can just add some weights on the back of it. And that's because this has now become the same thing as a port. But a port tunes your frequency by the length of the port. A passive radiator uses weights. In other words, it tunes a speaker to a specific frequency by adding or subtracting weights to it. You might think that finding the tuning would be relatively hard. It isn't. So let's start by showing you three different ways to tune a passive radiator. The first way to tune the passive radiator is by using a free program called WinISD. In order to use this method, you will need a Windows-based PC, and you'll need to know the TS parameters of the driver and the passive radiator. If you don't know these or you don't have a Windows PC, you'll want to use a different method. Now, I'll talk about that a little bit later. But for now, you'll want to input the parameters of the driver and the passive radiator into WinISD. If you don't know how to do that, follow these videos right here where I show you how to use this program. Assuming that your driver tells you what the optimal box size for a ported system is, that's the size you're typically going to want to start with. If it doesn't, you'll need to do a little trial and error with the volume of the box. Once you feel you have a good starting point, all you need to do is look at your graph and see what it looks like. If you're going for a flat response and see a large hump in the response, you'll need to tune it a little bit lower by adding more mass to the back of the passive radiator. To model that, just click on the passive radiator tab and add weight until you get the response that you desire. Do keep in mind that if you have selected multiple passive radiators in WinISD and you put the weight of 30 grams, that is the amount of weight that you need to add to each passive radiator. So if you're modeling two passive radiators in WinISD, you need to add 30 grams for each of those passive radiators or 60 grams in total. Once you have it tuned the way that you desire, you can build the box with the specified volume in WinISD. Assuming that the TS parameters of the passive radiator and the driver are good, this should tune out very similar to your model. I do know that there are some people that don't want to rely on a model, instead want to know exactly where they're tuned to. And that's where we go with the second way to tune a passive radiator. For this one, you'll need a Windows computer again, as well as a device called DATS. Now this device is designed by Dayton Audio and is really powerful for the price. It can measure your speaker to get you your TS parameters. It can measure the values of your resistors, your inductors, your capacitors, and of course, what you're really interested in, it can tell you the tuning frequency of a passive radiator or ported system. Now in order to know your tuning, you'll need to hook up DATS to your main driver in the box that you've already built. Keep in mind that you need to hook this up to a driver and not the amplifier. And once you have this hooked up, just run an impedance sweep. When looking at this impedance sweep, you're going to notice two large humps with a valley in between them. The lowest point in this valley is the tuning frequency of your passive radiators. In all likelihood, the first impedance sweep will not give you the desired tuning for your system. So what I recommend you doing is mounting your passive radiator backwards. This will still give you the tuning when measuring the impedance, but it'll be much easier to change the weight on the back of the passive radiator so that you can easily get your final tuning. From here, just keep adding or taking away weight until you get the tuning frequency that you desire. Remember, more weight lowers the tuning frequency and less weight raises the tuning frequency. Once you have it dialed in, mount your passive radiators the correct weight inside your box. Now, some of you are probably saying, I thought he said I could do this with tools around my house. I don't have any of those tools. I don't have a computer. Well, if that is you, then this last way is for you. For this method, you are once again going to mount those passive radiators backwards. Now, you just need to look for some common household ingredients. Yes, I said ingredients. It's because you're going to be using some kitchen ingredients, believe it or not. Okay, you're actually going to be using rice. Any type of rice will do. You don't have to go fancy and buy all of this sushi rice. In this case, all rice works the same. You're just going to grab a couple of pieces of rice. Keep in mind, you don't want a whole lot for this. Like one of my patrons, Blake Brockhouse, reminded me that if you put too much on there, you can actually change the mass of the cone, which can affect the tuning frequency. So you're just going to grab a few pieces of rice and put them on your active driver, i.e. not your passive radiators. Now, this works best when the active driver is facing up towards your ceiling. 
Now you're gonna go ahead and pull up a frequency tone generator. You can find these for free on the internet. Start playing a tone of 80 hertz to your system and continue to decrease that frequency until you find your tuning frequency. And the way that you'll know the tuning frequency is reached is when you first start this, that rice is going to bounce off the cone like crazy. But the closer you get to the tuning frequency, the less the rice will bounce to a point where the rice really isn't moving at all. When you've reached that point, this is your tuning frequency. And don't be afraid to go a little lower. Once you go below the tuning frequency, that rice will start jumping again. Once again, if your tuning frequency is not low enough, just add some weight, test it again, and if it's still not the same frequency that you want, keep doing that until you get your desired result. Once you get your desired result, you can turn those passive radiators around and install them normally. And it really is that simple to tune your passive radiators. That's it. You're done. And now you know three different ways to tune a passive radiator. If you like this content and you want more like it, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to ring the bell and like the video. Finally, I want to take a special minute to thank all of my patrons who make videos like this happen. They get unique behind the scenes looks and inspire me with great ideas. So thank you to all my patrons. Now, if you want to help continue to make videos like these and get behind the scenes footage, make sure to check out my Patreon page, which is linked in the description. Thanks guys, this is Toyd's DIY Audio, and I'm out.